Since we like to express symbolically what's going on with our chemistry, we have to know what the different sort of symbols mean. For example, quite often we will just refer to the molecular formula and it'll be written very concisely. Uh, you know, C3H6O. It tells you there's three carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen. It doesn't tell you how to attach it together. Here's another one, C2H4O2. Again, you don't know how they attach together, and that is a molecular formula. Now, if you need to know a little bit more about how they're put together, the next level up to try to understand things is a structural formula. So here we have, if you look at it, it's exactly C3H6O, but it's showing you how to put them together. Here's the three C's, there's the single O, and here are the H's. Now, the thing is, this structural formula has been flattened to put it on the page. So it does still suffer from a certain spatial inadequacy, but it does show you how they're put together instead of making you guess, like up here in the molecular formula. Here's the same thing for the C2H4O2. There's two C's, here's two O's, and here are some H's. You can imagine the reason they did the molecular formula to begin with is because this takes a lot of time. At the same time, sometimes you really do need to know how they're put together, right? So someone came up also with what is called a condensed structural formula. So if you look here, you'll see that the way the C and the O are attached is repeated faithfully compared to the structural formula. But here at this end and this end, the CH3 is just written as one group. This is a methyl group. And it's a very common grouping. And because of its very commonality, everyone knows, once they've learned it, that the CH3 really should be looking more like this. So as you are more familiar with things and learn what different units that are commonly repeated within a molecule, you can use that to do a condensed structural formula, which means it would take a lot less time to draw. We've done the same thing over here. You can see, oh, here's a CH3. That's that methyl group again. And it turns out the COOH is also a very common group, but they haven't completely condensed it here because they're probably not thinking you know about it yet because it's more of something you would encounter in organic chemistry. So they're not condensing it as much as they could. So when we're working with these uh, formulas and the structural formulas, which I said suffered from the problem of the fact that they were flattened, you can also get a model kit. And then a model kit will let you build a model so that you can see exactly how things are structured. You can see from this, even though the uh, condensed structural formula and the regular structural formula made it look like all of these things were right angles, you can tell for sure that they aren't when you see it in three dimensions. The way a ball and stick model is put together, there's a lot of emphasis on the direction of the bonds and their position relative to each other. And it's very accurate in that sense. It is not very accurate in terms of how close together these things are. So the ball and stick model has some definite good things about it. And here's the other one that we were talking about. You can see how, once again, we have another one of these. This is that CH3 methyl group we were talking about. And here's the COOH group. And you can see we have to put a double bond on it to show it properly. And you can see how they interact with each other and how they might be able to move in comparison to each other. On this one, I was having a lot of fun here just a minute ago by doing this. Oh, wow. Who would have thought you could get all that motion out of there? But there, those are your ball and stick models. They're very good about getting the exact spatial orientations put together so that you can see them. The last thing is a space filling model. And in the models that they create um, online, they can make them even tighter than this. And the pictures that you see in your book indicate things tighter than this. But 
a model kit can also be used using these really short bonds to try to simulate the full extent of the space filling model. And this is a little more accurate as to exactly how crunched together everything becomes. We get from this, we would think that everything is quite spaced out from each other. And in reality, they aren't. All of the atoms are quite close to each other. And so the space filling model is good for showing you how that looks. So those are your different types of formulas and models.